These deals won't last long, so buy now. Thanks, Chris. Could we try one more tank? Sure. I want it to be a little more red. A little more red? Yes, red. Bleeding into the orange and then finishing on the purple, if that makes sense. When a voice actor is being directed, the same phrases tend to always crop up. Be more conversational, be more excited, be warmer, be cooler. Now the problem with this is that these terms are all quite subjective in terms of how we understand them. What you think of as conversational and what I understand to be conversational can be radically different things depending on the context. And to counteract this, a good voice actor must always ground their reads by asking questions such as, who am I? What do I want and why? This establishes a clear objective, or if you want to get really actorly, a need to speak. And it's also a textbook example of an actor working from in to out, from an intellectual thought process and decision out into their physical action and how they use their voice. But just because a voice actor does all of that preparatory work doesn't mean that there still might not be a disconnect between what they're doing and what the voice director is actually hearing in their performance. Wouldn't there be some sort of benefit to have a vocabulary that actually focuses on the external performative elements as opposed to just the intellectual process? This could help make the process of assimilating feedback much more practical and objective rather than leaving it to our own intuition which is where this kind of vagueness arises and the disconnect happens well it just so happens that a tool a vocabulary like this does actually already exist and it's all thanks to Rudolf Laban now Laban was an Austro-Hungarian movement director who worked first of all with dancers and then moved on to actors as well and the whole reason that he devised his system was so that he could communicate his direction as clearly as possible his system essentially condenses all movement down into eight efforts. Anything that you do is going to be one of those eight efforts, and each one of those is composed of three variables. Timing, space, and weight. So for timing, an action can either be sudden or sustained. For weight, an action could be light or it could be strong. And in terms of space, a movement could either be direct or indirect. And so those three variables, when rotated, create our eight Laban efforts. Gliding, pressing, floating, ringing, dabbing, <laughs> punching, <laughs> flicking, slashing. So how are all these things relative to our voice? Well, firstly, a voice actor's physicality innately affects their vocal performance as well. And this is something that I've already covered in a previous video, which you should check out if you haven't already. What Laban only does is it adds a more specific vocabulary, which can be shared by the director as well as the actor. But also at drama school, I was taught by my movement director, Vanessa Uwen, at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama, because I'm classically trained, you know that these tools are something that yes you can externalize in very big uh, physical actions first and foremost to get a sense of really what ringing or floating truly feels like but then you can quieten down and incorporate and internalize these feelings much much more so that you know the ringing you can have an externalized ringing like this which could bring out a very strong a sense for you but a, a, but a much subtler manifestation of that is just balling your hands or clenching your jaw as you do in real life what I'm not suggesting is that tools such as these should therefore make uh, your vocal performances much less nuanced quite the opposite it's not a general wash that you want to cover any of the reads that you do using Laban efforts you could even use Laban efforts just to focus on the stresses of particular words so the typical elongation of a vowel in order to give a word more emphasis well is that a pressing elongation or is it a gliding elongation because that will give them very different qualities while still giving emphasis to a word that you need to. Just to give a very quick example of this in action, in a very broad way, I'm just going to read the opening monologue from one of my favourite games, Fallout, just going through all of the different efforts as a demonstration. War. War never changes. The Romans waged war to gather slaves and wealth. Spain built an empire from its lust for gold and territory. Hitler shaped a battered Germany into an economic superpower. But war never changes. In the 21st century, war was still waged over the resources that could be acquired. But this time, the spoils of war were also 
its weapons. This added vocabulary can be useful for both actors and for voice directors. It can make any adjustments in tandem with the what, where and the why more specific and you can utilize these terms to whatever degree that you feel comfortable with. So when you're next feeling stuck and you're not sure about what's being asked of you, I suggest trying to think in terms of Laban. It might just prompt you with that spark of creativity when you need it most. And if you did find this video useful in any way, then why not check out my course The Foundations of VoiceOver available on Skillshare which is completely free if you just sign up for a trial. Just saying. Please do like, subscribe and spread the word as ever and I look forward to seeing you next time.